you're all in charge of reminding me. So my name is Sharon Whiteman, and it's my great pleasure and privilege to be here with Diana and Gary every week and our special guest speakers. Um, we're so fortunate in Manatech globally to have the quality of training that we have. And as everybody knows, um, in our great business, it's all for free. And Ty is so very generous every time I ask him to share his knowledge base and training skills with us. So Ty, thank you so very much. For those of you, I know um, we've got quite a few new people partnering with us in Manatech at the moment. So you may not have had the pleasure of knowing Ty. He's an internet entrepreneur, an author, and a work at home dad who lives in Seattle, Washington with his wife, Rochelle, and two children, Emma and Tyler. Ty has been featured in Entrepreneur and Success from Home magazine and is considered by many as the founding father of network marketing bloggers. Author of the book, Double Your Income with Network Marketing, Ty teaches lead generation strategies through social media and blogging to tens of thousands of network marketers around the world. You may remember him from the social, mobile, global trainings with Manatech, and more recently, the M Life system. Ty partnered with James Hannon several years ago and embraced the Manatech community as his own. Generous and masterfully skilled, you'll want to listen to Ty's every word on this call. Now, I don't, I don't know. I, I think this is, you know, besides listening, this might be the number one skill to master for people wanting a successful home business. Ty, would you say? I think so. Yeah. You know, it's, it changed uh, everything for me. That's for sure. Okay. And I imagine you have a PowerPoint that you'd like to share. Uh, nope. Nope. We're just going to go straight ah. into it. Oh, cool. So did you want an interview style tie or do you want me um, just to listen and then jot down questions? I think we can do some questions at the end. That would be perfect. I've, Cause I've got, I've got okay. quite a bit to, to hammer through in a, in a pretty packed period of time. So if we can save okay, those perfect. questions at the end, that would be awesome. All right, well, I'll go off camera and I'll be here if you need me. Very cool, thank you so much. The, the first thing I would say um, as we, we get into this topic today is that um, you guys are so blessed to have the group of leaders put together this kind of a, of a call on a, on a weekly basis. It's such an important piece of the puzzle. And um, I'm gonna talk about it in, um, the second, uh, I'm gonna break this into two parts. One is really belief. Um, and, and the second part is um, more related to uh, you, your actual ability to um, posture, business posture. So um, let's just jump in here. So first of all, three main beliefs that that i believe that that are vitally important to your success in this business and and, and you're going to notice something like like i am a big believer in in using the right words and writing down like um uh, uh you know scripts and things of that nature but what's what's very um probably more important than than those words is is what's what's here Okay, so the mental side of network marketing, if you can, can um, get a grasp and a handle of that piece of the puzzle, you are only a period of time away from, from gaining success because at some point, it's not gonna matter what other people say, and we'll get into that a lot, but um, whether or not they join you, uh, you, are, you are going a certain place and you're gonna get there no matter what, and um, it's just a, a matter of time. For some people, it's gonna take longer. Everybody gets involved in, in network marketing with, this, with a particular uh, level of skill. And, and for some people, it's gonna take longer to get to the point where they have the belief and they have the posture to, to attract people to them, okay? Others arrive there, and that's why they grow so quickly from the very beginning. Some people, it takes a little bit more work to get to a level playing field. And I would tell you that for me, it took a lot more work. <laughs> Everybody says, oh, Ty, wow, he's, he's really um, uh, built a, a big business and, and, and grown so fast. And the reality was for 10 years, uh, let, let me rephrase that. Okay. I had five years of going out three to four nights a week with my wife. When, when you put your wife in, in a dress 
um, and nylons to, to build a business for five years, you better be making some money after that five years. And I was not. Um, at, I had basically given up on, on home business uh, after five years and, and took about a five year sabbatical from the, the profession. And then, uh, but, but I didn't take a sabbatical from learning. Okay, I did not take a sabbatical from learning. I was always reading, I was always trying to better myself. I was listening to positive audios. I was, I was watching webinars like you have access to. Um, and, and so what happened was I met a new mentor and in nine months I had personally enrolled 100 people. In 18 months I was earning a six figure income. 36 months later, I, I had a multiple six figure income. Okay, so, um, and, and quit my job and, and all that kind of great stuff. So it, it's an interesting dynamic to think, oh wow, you grew really fast. Yeah, I grew really fast after 10 years of struggle. Okay, so for me, it took a significant longer period of time than the, maybe the average person. The crazy part of me is I just probably didn't give up, right? So um, as we go through this, they're, they're, words are important, but the proper mindset is, is, is way more important than, than the words you use to convey to people, okay? So the right attitude mindset be, set begins with, with your belief. So number one, I want you to gain belief about the industry of network marketing. This is kind of a no brainer today, but, but when I was first writing my book, I was like, you know, people still wondered about this industry. And I, th I guess people still do today. Oh, one of those things. Um, one point, um, a couple of years ago, I interviewed a guy that, that was earning over $120,000 per month in network marketing. Okay. One of those deals and people think, wow, do people really make money? And, and I was sitting there, I knew for a fact people make money. I've met too many people. As a matter of fact, I've met a lot of people that, that in, in, in the real world would probably never make six figures. <laughs> and this sounds weird, but their skill set was not conducive to producing in the, in, in the regular world. But they come into network marketing and they kill it. Multiple, multiple six-figure income. I mean, like to the millions of dollars a year, I've met hundreds, probably thousands. I've interviewed hundreds of people just like that. So if you're coming into this thing, I wonder if this business, this industry really works. It, it, yes, okay, yes it does. That should be a no brainer. Number two is um, belief in, in your company. In, in, in Manitech, I think there's something like a 270 or 250, I, I don't recall the exact number, uh, millionaires created in this company. Uh, that's a lot. There is a 25 year track record of success in this company. Um, one of the things that, that, that stands apart when it comes to man attack is that they've been around for 25 years. They've had their ups and downs, but there's one constant and it makes all the difference in the world. And that's the product at man attack. I'm a more business focused builder. I always have been, but you cannot deny, um, the reality of, and, and the impact of the Manatech products on people's lives. People will come back again and again and again forever, for years, for 25 years to buy those products. And, and um, that is a rarity in this industry. So number two is, is gain belief um, in your company. If you don't have belief in the company, you need to get around more events. You need to shake the hands of people who have, had, who have obtained success. And what you're going to figure out is that they're no different than, than, than me or you. We're just regular, everyday people who have a dream to do something more in life and, and found Manatech as a vehicle. Um, the third one is a strong belief in you and your own capabilities. You know, um, your, your dreams and goals uh, are, are a wonderful way to spur that on. And, and what I mean by that is that if, if the dream is big, this is a topic that I know this is said many times, it's kind of old cliche, but if the dream is big enough, the facts don't count. And I'm not saying you ignore the facts. I'm a very, I'm, I'm a bit of an analytical type person, even though I'm a little bit ADD, 
um, there's ADD slash OCD weird combination in, in, in my brain. But what I want you to think about is that if, if you have something that you really truly want to attain, you will put in the effort and, and, and go after it no matter what, when it, is, when it is something that you desperately desire in your life. And that's why, you know, just, oh, I wanna make six figures. I don't think that's enough to, to like spur the human heart, okay? If you wanna be free, and, and like I was a, my son absolutely does, has no concept of, of a dad that left for work. Okay, none whatsoever. My daughter a little bit early on, but, but very vaguely. Okay, I was always at home with those kids and, and mom too. And so when that was my, my desire, I wanted to be a, an at-home dad. I wanted to not shuffle my kids off to daycare. I wanted to be the one that was, that was taking them to swim lessons, me and seven moms, right? And, and taking them on the field trips, me and, and eight other moms. It was odd, but um, kids loved it. It made a big impact on their life. And, and there was always that male role model there at all times, okay? So um, that was my dream, that was my goal. And, and, and beyond that, there was a, a level of income that was required to obviously attain that, but also to, to live a life of freedom. I grew up quite poor, you could say. And, and my mom was reminding me the other day about um, one of the places we stayed when I was very young was just my mom and I, was a single mom. And um, we didn't have any heat in, in, in this uh, place. We didn't have any, like, um, I don't think there was electricity and obviously no TV or anything like that. And, and there was no, um, I think there was running water, but no, no indoor restroom. There was what, what is fondly called in the US an outhouse. Only the crazy part about this is that we were too poor for the outhouse. It was just an out. Toilet outside, but no house around it. That's, that's pretty poor, okay? And, and I didn't live there my whole life. And, and, and you know, I mean, I grew up and, and things changed in my life and I wasn't that poor all the time, but I know the difference between poor and, and having money. And I realized, you know, quite young that I wanted to um, be comfortable. I didn't want to like um, have to make my kids uh, check with me before they ordered something at a restaurant. Little things like that when you're, when you're young, like, oh man, I, can I really or order anything on the menu? <laughs> Um, my kids never had to go through that that level of of um, being poor, but you know they heard the stories. Obviously, um, all this to say that your dream will make a big impact on your ability to in, in your belief in yourself. And and let me just say, God doesn't make junk. You already have the skills, the, the ability to become successful in this business, in Manatech. I'm just going to challenge you to dig deep and utilize the skills that you already have. Some, some of you are, are, are very interested in, in the product and, and others are more business orientated. You, and, and if you gravitate a certain way, utilize and, and balance because there's different approaches. I'm, I mainly approach people via product today um, and, and, and bring people on as a customer. I think later on we, we get business oriented unless the person has a real affinity to the business. So it, there, there's a dynamic there that, that I don't approach people based on my personal preference. I approach them based on, on, on what they um, uh, tell me, right? When you ask questions and listen, as, as Sharon said, uh, you're going to hear uh, response from people that, that will give you hints as to how Manatech uh, products or business will impact their life in one way or the other. Obviously, we know that the, the products will impact everyone. They may not be ready for that. They may be ready to, to make money. So you can approach them, them that way too. But once you, you know, understand that you have what it takes, that you have this belief in yourself, 
when, when you have those three things dialed in, so belief in this industry, belief in, in, in Manatech as a company and, and belief in yourself, get those three things dialed in and, and things will begin to click into place. The second area is, is posture. And that's when these three beliefs begin to pour out of you. At some point, um, I had this epiphany that if another person didn't want to work with me in my business, they're kind of crazy. And that seems a little bit arrogant, but the reality is it's true. I help too many people earn, you know, cars or six figure levels of income or, um, you know, trips. If, if I count how many trips my teams have earned over the years, people in my downline, it's a, I mean, there's millions of miles of travel and, and, and probably millions of dollars spent on trips that, that these folks have, have earned as a result of, of a little bit of my mentorship. Now, some of it is, is, is um, you know, finding the right people right? <laughs> but others, I, I helped a little bit of that along. And so if I'm talking to someone on the phone and say, oh, I would never get involved in something like that. Those things don't work. I've seen too much. And, and what I would challenge you to do is from now on, if, if you have not seen too much yet, have a little bit of trust that, that I'm not, I mean, what's in it for me to tell you uh, this works? Nothing really. There's probably not anyone in, in my team on this on this call. Um, and I, I do have some Australian teammates, but um, I, I, and there might be a couple, but there's there's nothing really monetarily in it for me to tell you this works. So why am I telling you it works? Is it because it does, right? It does. So um, if you haven't taken out a pen yet, do it now. I'm going to give you seven attributes of of effective business posture. Number number one probably the most important one. I should probably put this number seven, but I'm going to give you the most important one up front. But don't get me wrong. Number seven is really, truly awesome too. So you want to stay tuned for that one. Um, but number one, your business does not rise or fall based on the actions of any given person except for you. Okay. The, the best posture to take is that you really don't care whether a person gets involved with you in your business or not. I can't, do I care whether a person gets involved? Of, of, of course I do. But I don't let it impact me in, in a negative or positive way. Not oh, positive, yeah. I mean, if you sponsor four people in, 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 in a week, you're happier than if you sponsored zero. It's just a fact, okay? Um, but what I'm challenging you to do is, is, is you, know, you look for people that can make a major impact on, on their lives and the lives of thousands of people. That's what I look for. And if the person does not see that vision, you're, you're gonna find someone who does. It's just a matter of sifting through the folks. I, I was at the store today and I picked up some uh, apples. I think I found five apples. I, I'm not the pickiest apple uh, buyer, but I probably touched, which is a, which is a good reason to wash your apples. I probably touched 10 to 12 apples to find the right five or six. Okay. I, it wasn't the first one I picked up. They weren't the, the successful one. <laughs> they weren't the chosen one. They weren't the chosen apple. Okay. So same thing in this business, you're going to sift through some people to find the right people for your business. The outcome of a meeting is much less, less important than the actions you'll, you'll take to fill up your calendar. Let me say that one more time. The outcome of the meeting is much less important than the actions it takes to fill up your calendar. You cannot fail if you do enough of the right things. Note that I not, did not say, you cannot fail if you do things. Busy people bug the crap out of me. <laughs> busy people doing what? I love, I love working with busy people because they typically have a calendar. But busy people that are just busy for the sake of being busy drive me nuts. Okay? It's not just doing things. 
it's doing enough of the right things, okay? And, and if you don't know what the right things are, get with your upline. So that was number one. Your business does not rise and fall based on any singular person that you, that you talk to. And once you get that into your, into your skull, your, your, your meetings, the posture of that will make you be a different person. Sponsoring people in network marketing is a little bit like dating. It's probably a lot like dating. When you are desperate to find a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you know what's interesting? They're not around anywhere. When you have no expectations and you're not worried about it, you're just going about your business, boom, 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 boom. There's, there's probably boys and girls everywhere for you. Number two. Uh, look at contacting and presenting as an interview instead of a presentation. I'm talking about mentally. Obviously, you do not want to convey that this is a job, okay? And, 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 and you're not interviewing to hire someone. But the reality is, um, I have told people, on, particularly on the phone, that I, I don't see this as a match. And... Um, I appreciate your time, but you're probably not the right person for, for you know, the right type of person I'm looking for. You're like, whoa, you told a prospect that they weren't right for your business? Yes, probably, I'm not saying hundreds of times, but a lot, okay? I've told a lot of people I didn't think they were, they were because um, I, today I, I bring on a lot of, of customers but I bring on only a handful of, um, of business partners because I'm going to spend a, a significant amount of time working with those people to make sure they're going to attain a level of success that's right for them, that they want. So to me, it's worth um, being a little bit picky when it comes to the people I sponsor. Again, number one is you don't need anyone. Number two is the attitude is... Um, interview instead of pitch okay and and ne never ever ever beg a person to come to a meeting the posture of that is so bad i i remember you know b back in the day i'd have my upline come to my house and do a presentation and, and gosh i was just so um i, I wanted to impress them and, and, and make sure that we had people there I just beg people oh please will you come i'll buy you drinks afterwards i'll get you dinner blah 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 it doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do you any good to beg someone to come to the meeting, okay? You're going to find the right people. You're looking for people that are interested. I mean, there's six, what, six billion people in the world? I don't know how many. There's a lot that need the right products, and there's a lot that need more money. You're looking for those people. Um, your, your time, please understand this, your time and your business have a high value. If you got started in this, in, in, in Man Attack, your time and, and, and your business is very valuable. If I look at the number of presentations I did versus the level of income that I've created over the last 20 plus years, it's, it's insane. <laughs> okay? So for every single presentation, no matter what they said, I earned a level of income that's, that's, that's an incredible number, okay? So you just focus on putting in the effort. Don't worry about the results. The results will come. Keep getting better. Keep focusing on the right things. Keep focusing on the other person's wants, needs, or desires, not your own. And, and, and your wants, needs, and desires will, to, will take care of. You have everything at your disposal to create a multi-million dollar business. So the best way to look at it is I have a multi-million dollar business just in its infancy right now, okay? I have a multi-million dollar business, but it's just in its infancy. It hasn't blossomed yet, but that's the reality. So look at your contacting advising as an interview and think about your business as a multi-million dollar business. If, even if it's not there yet, if it's not there, then it's just in its infancy. It hasn't blossomed hundred percent yet. It will. It just takes time. Water. <laughs> um, number three, 
uh, smile and laugh. This is such a huge one for me. And again, this is posture. Smile and laugh. Um, on my whiteboard in my office, and I'm outside of my office right now, I like to move around and work at different rooms in my house. I feel like it, I don't know, it just makes me feel happier. Um, but in my office, there's a, there's a big sign on my whiteboard that says smile, okay? Here's a, here's, here's a key. Um, even if you're not on a video, even if you're not one-on-one -on -one with a person in a coffee shop, even if you're not standing in front of, of people in a presentation, smile on the phone. It will come through. 100% it will come through in your voice, okay? So smile and laugh a lot. The effect of a smile is powerful even when it is unseen. That says Dale Carnegie in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which I would highly recommend. Maybe the number one book for network marketers in the world. Um, and, and again, this is a little bit of a backtrack, but network marketing is a lot like dating. Is it attractive? when a person smiles, then, then versus frowning, 100% it is. Um, just about every high level person I've ever met in the, in the profession of network marketing uh, has had a sense of humor. Just about every single one. So if you don't have a sense of humor, find one. Find things to laugh at. I, I found that every single person who, who feels, feels like they're not funny is 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 still a little bit funny if they try a little bit if they just loosen up a little bit if they have fun okay so i'll tell you a little bit of story a quick story about my sense of humor i thought since i was in high school that i was hilarious i thought man i am so funny sometimes and and one time my mentor said ty you know what this is like after hours, we had just done a big meeting and, and it, was, it was fun. And he goes, Ty, you know what? You're, you're not nearly as funny as you think you are. I'm like, what are you talking about? How could you say that? He goes, he goes your wife laughs all the time and people love her for it. And she's just the happiest smiling person that I've ever met in my life. But you live around that all the time. So when you tell a joke, your wife laughs, no matter if it's funny or not. I'm like, oh man, my, my, my whole life is just, is killed now. I'm not nearly as funny as I thought. I, I still think I'm funny. That's just the, see, I have the right posture on that. But um, <laughs> it, 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 it's one of the reasons you think about posture and, and, and business and, and, and becoming an attractive person, not only you know, to, to people, um, in your business, but people you're working to attract pe to, to people to your business. My wife is this great example. I'll, I'll go to a meeting and uh, for some reason, my wife didn't attend. And the first thing that people ask me is, Ty, where's Rochelle? <laughs> I, I, was, I was so excited to see your wife. I'm like, thanks, you know, here I'm chopped liver. But she's happy. She smiles and she laughs and you can hear her laugh from a mile away. It's attractive, okay? So you wanna be attractive, we're talking about attraction marketing in a sense, um, posture is, is, is part of that. Uh, number four is, is you are comfortable with you. Be comfortable with you. My kids, this is one thing I really tried to teach them. People in general, in, in all kinds of different settings are probably way more concerned with how others perceive them than uh, paying attention to how you are being perceived. Okay, do you see what I'm saying? People in general, especially in like high school, middle school, they're so concerned about how everyone is, like I would be so concerned about how I'm being perceived. I'm really not, concerned about you. So if you're in that situation, why are we so concerned about what everyone else thinks when everyone else is way more concerned about what people are thinking about them? You see what I'm saying? It's kind of this weird dynamic. And so I would just say, be comfortable in your skin, um, be relaxed. Uh, we can all be vulnerable in some ways, um, but rather than focus 
inwardly on our own deficiencies, I would say um, work to focus on the other person in, in all circumstances, especially in business. If you're doing a home meeting or if you're doing a, a coffee shop meeting or one-on-one -on -one or whatever the case may be, focus on that other person. Don't worry about you. Um, we are way less important than, than, than we think we are sometimes and than, than, than the perception from, from other people. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that, that people are way more inwardly focused. And, and if you would just be outwardly focused on, on how you can serve other people, you're going to find that takes you a long ways in your business and the attitude of, ah, whatever. So I, I wore, I mean, when I first started building a business, um, and, and actually when I was a master distributor of a company, I, I went to, a, 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 I did a, a weekend uh, events in Chicago, Illinois. So I live in Seattle, Washington, Chicago's three quarters of the way across the country. I packed three pairs of shoes and I, I opened up my suitcase and realized that all three pairs of shoes were unmatched so i had a pair of black shoes but i have i i had a, like three pair of black dress shoes which is, i know i'm sorry it's it's a it's a disease if i took you live to my closet and and looked at the shoe selection you would it would be crazy it's a, it's it's a problem i haven't bought bought that many shoes in a long time but um so i had all these different dress shoes none that so i literally had to go to big meetings that night before i could get to the shoe store the next day with a mismatched pair of shoes no one noticed if, if someone noticed they didn't say anything i mean i was up on stage speaking the reality is that people are more concerned about what they would in, inward stuff than than looking at at my shoes okay so don't worry about it be happy don't worry be happy that's that's if you write down anything, maybe that's it. Number five, pay attention to your physical appearance. Um, th this has changed a lot since uh, I got started in, in network marketing. I would say uh, have, have a look around the um, dress style of the people within your company. If you go to an event or something like that, and then maybe, maybe just the game a little bit but be cognizant of how the people are are addressing okay um i would just say don't you know have have some good decent fashion sense not sloppy um, one of the things in the u.s and i don't know if this has hit australia but you know kids with the pants that sag down their butts it's not attractive it's not a good look it's not professional at all i i would love to just go by and pull their their pants up and I think it's gone for the most part, but um, you know, th there's, there's a company culture that, that, that probably permeates um, meetings and things like that. And there's a difference between probably the US and Australia and Canada is probably a little bit different and New Zealand's probably a little bit different and other countries and China, everybody's just a little bit different probably. Um, you know, uh, if the culture is business casual, then then go business casual, which is probably like a sports coat, slacks, and a button-up shirt for for a guy. Maybe no tie. Um, some some companies a polo shirt and a pair of slacks is 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 perfect. It really depends on the company. You want to if if you're presenting, um, you want to be professional, but you don't want to over, you know, you don't want to be like three-piece suit. Like if you're, if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one with my friend. I'm not going to put a three-piece suit on and go go sit down and have a cup of coffee with him when when all he's ever seen me in the past is jeans and and a, and a polo shirt. Okay, this doesn't make sense. So, but be cognizant. But you don't want to be clean. Okay. Um, if you feel completely lost, now this is probably more U.S. based. There's a couple of stores I would I would send you to that that they would take care of you. Um, yeah, I'm just looking through some of the stuff I've got notes on. Clean clothing. Uh, check, check, check in the mirror, okay? Um, men, he, uh, as we get older, the crazy thing about um, 
Oh, James want to know how I did on this morning call. <laughs> Thanks, James. I'll let you know when it's over. Um, as men age, uh, one of the things that happens is that hair begins to be less prevalent here, okay, and somehow more prevalent here and, 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 and here coming out of our nose, right? So um, be cognizant of those things a little bit. You're in a people business, okay? So you don't want like a, 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 a forest growing out of your ear or, or your nose, okay? And women are like, oh, thank God he's saying that and I don't have to. Well, um, I, you know, Sasquatch hair coming out of your chest with the open collar, it's not cool. And, and, and women are like, yes, get them. Thank you, Ty, for saying that. And I would just say for women, um, don't dress in, in a way that would distract from your presentation, especially if you're meeting men, okay? And I'll leave it at that. I think you, you will grasp what I'm, what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not going to talk a lot about women's fashion. It's just not my, not my deal. Number six, speak to others with volume and confidence. Okay, if you are a natural talker that kind of talks like this and you're just kind of subdued a little bit, it's okay. Um, but you don't have to be me who, who, you know, my daughter, when she'd walk home from school, she would feel like I was yelling into the phone, which I probably am still yelling, right? Um, but if you're a quiet talker, bring, bring it up a couple notches. It'll, it'll produce confidence and, and, and um, uh, you know, people will be able to hear you. If you find people are like, what was that? I, I, I didn't quite get you. If you find people say that consistently, you need to bring it up a couple octaves, okay? Um, and, and also like slang is an interesting one, especially in Australia, right? I, I mean, I would be on the phone with James Hannon and um, I'd be like, he'd say something like, I, 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 just, I don't even have, a, I, I thought I had a handle on a lot of the Australian slang, but I really have no idea what you, what you said. Now, so I, obviously it's different when you're talking to other Australians, but if, you, if you're speaking to someone in the U.S. and, and building a business, be very careful with, 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 with some of the slang. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I thought there was only a handful of things, and there are like hundreds of, of differences in in um, in in talking, but when I, when I speak to people in the U.S., I just be be careful of slang. Like try for you don't have to use proper English all the time, but um, experienced public speakers will will tend to use basic words. So you, like especially if you're trying to explain the science of things, be careful with with scientific speak. It can be, especially with manage, it can be very um, confusing. And, and you have to remember, people have been around that scientific speak stuff for 20 years. We, people who are not around it are like, I, I just have no idea what you're talking about. So speak clearly, plainly, and, and be cognizant of different countries, okay? Um, so number six is speak to others with volume and confidence and just be confident in, in things you say. Um, number seven is exude a high level of urgency. Okay, when I'm talking to someone on the phone about business, uh, I'm always urgent. And the reason is I have a finite amount of time to get them to where they um, need to be in order to get healthy, in order to make more money, in order to live the life that they deserve. And so I am, um, uh, think about this. I want you to think about your business as a, as a fast moving train. Every once in a while you slow down a little bit, bring some more people on and then you're off again, okay? So it's a fast moving train. Do you want on? Okay, fantastic. And, and people will want to be part of that. If you're moving, if you know exactly where you're going, if you're excited about where you're going, um, I just don't wait around for people to, to, to decide, to take 15 years to decide whether they um, should spend $49 on a kit to get started in it as a business associate. It's like dumb. 
<laughs> really, it's like, okay, so if you want to make more money, and this sounds interesting to you, why are we worried about 50 bucks? It is especially, now, here's the thing. When I first got started, um, 50 bucks was enormous to me. Enormous. So I understand that there can be financial pressures here and there, but I want you to make sure that that you have some you know urgency in this hey let's you know and and so many people will do a presentation and and this is a little bit off topic but it has everything to do with posture they do a presentation and then they don't even follow up they don't even place a call and say hey what's going on are you ready to go that one little thing could change your business forever i know people that that ty you don't understand i do i do i do 20 presentations a month, but I'm not sponsoring anybody. Uh, have you ever called those people back and say, hey, you, you ready to get started? Let's get you going. And what a difference that is. If you think about the posture of that versus, oh, um, would, you, would you like to get started and, and, and build a business? Okay. At the end of a meeting, do you say, um, that was pretty cool, right? What'd you like best about what you saw? Versus, and, you know, today I even have trouble saying what, what many people say because it's just so, uh, I'm, I'm, I've worked so hard on the posture side of things. So, I mean, after a meeting, you go up to your prospect and you say, what'd you think? You, you, you don't want to know what they thought most of the time because they could be a person that, that goes to see Hamilton, which is an amazing musical. Um, I, I mean, just the sets were amazing. The singers were amazing. It was just this phenomenal uh, musical production. And they might have said, eh, it was okay. If they're an eh, it was an okay person. What do you think they're going to say to a to, to when you ask them what they thought of a meeting? Eh, that was all right, <laughs> right? What did you like best about that? Or, or goodness, you say I'm going to follow up with you a couple of days just to uh, uh, get you get get you going. And and then you call them and say you re you ready to get started? Let's go. Let's get you going. Let's get you making some money this month. Versus, hey, what'd you think? Oh, would you be interested in getting started? It's night and day, okay? And again, th those are specific scripts and words, but when you have the right attitude, those words kind of naturally flow. And, and the words are so important. This is one thing I'm, I'm hoping that we can get better in, 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 in Manatech and maybe network marketing as a whole and that is that positive mental attitude all, all the time. PMA all the way, positive mental attitude. And, and if you have that permeating everything you do, not only in life, but in business, it will make all the difference in the world. So Sharon, if you wanna come back on, I think that's, that's it. And, and I, can, um, I can post those seven things if anybody wants them. It's in my book too, but. The seven attributes we can we can uh, make those available and then in the three beliefs it's such we timeless can, wisdom actually, i could it? probably copy that that whole section and, and and put it out somewhere for you so we'll work that out oh excellent i can put a link up for everybody um it's such timeless wisdom you know i know you wrote that book some years ago and it's just the foundation isn't it of quality relating in this business yeah it hasn't changed i mean there's so much that hasn't changed mm. um I mean, I wrote my book and, and, and a lot of it was basics and, and things of that nature. And then the second part was kind of internet marketing related, but the basics haven't changed in 25 years. And, and frankly, the internet marketing piece, it, it changes so rapidly that um, a lot of times, uh, you know, unless you're up with exactly what's going on and, and I mean, like Facebook can make one little change and, and screw everything up. It's just, it's so <laughs> wild. Um, th that understanding those basics, the, the foundational stuff, 
um, will get you so much further along as a whole. It's, it, it, it's really a wild, a wild thing, but get the basics down and, and, and then everything else. You can learn some of the skills, the internet stuff and, and some of the approaches, but get those mindset basics down. So why so many people talk about mindset all the time uh, and people go, oh boy, why do they talk about mindset all the time? Because if you get mm -hmm. the mindset right, the other stuff is, is oh, for the most part, easy peasy. Yeah. So for, I think the trickiest thing that I've seen for people, myself included, is having good posture before you have the results that you're talking to people about. What do you recommend for people that are feeling that, you know, well, I've been doing my business part time and I'm not where I want to be. How can I yeah. help someone else? Well, particularly after I failed for 10 years, <laughs> um, what I did is I used, it's a credibility thing, right? we're concerned like, Hey, I, I've been after this or at, at this home-based business thing for 10 years. And, you know, not only do I not driving a, a Porsche, I'm, I mean, like a, I have nothing. I, the most I ever made was $1,200 in a, in a month and I spent a thousand to get it. It's like, that's not good results. So what do I do? Well, if you don't have posture, if you don't have credibility, I draft off of the credibility and posture of my upline. Okay, so I use a, I mean, I still to this day I have many times used a third party approach when I'm talking to someone. Um, got a friend of mine who, from Australia, who was expanding a, a business into the US and he told me to look for a couple of, of key people I thought of you. Do you want me to connect you? He's doing some internet marketing stuff and it's really kind of interesting. Do you want me to connect you two together and, and, and so you can have a conversation and see, see where it leads? Oh, what's it all about? I mean, he's mm. like, I, I told you the basics. I mean, you, you want to chat with him? It'd probably take five minutes. I don't know. It's up to you. It's, it's completely pressure off of me. And, and, and then, you know, that's like a, a three-way call type situation, which I still yeah. firmly believe in today. So it's a, a third party validation um, and, and credibility. Use that credibility of your upline. That's how I sponsored 100 people in nine months mm. is, is I put, I, put uh, I don't know, maybe 150 or 200 on the phone with my upline. And, and well, I know I'm looking at the list here. I know some people don't have active upline, which is, you know, on a company with longevity like we've got in nanotech um yeah. you know there's <clears throat> a bit of a varied experience after a long time so they can always use your experience or a call like this or another call like last week we had uh, quite a few amazing speakers talking about the benefits of leveraged income so there's lots of resources to use um to sure. use someone else's experience yeah i mean even if you had to um you sometimes you can use a cross line and, and I'm not saying you put them on the phone with them, but uh, some third party tends to work where I, I've put people on the phone with downline once in a while, depends on the, on the situation. Yeah. Um, and, and if, the, if, if you can't, uh, you use someone else for credibility. Uh, here's, here's the thing. Why are you trying to use your own credibility anyway? where who's that focused on yeah it's focused here again like which we just spent all the time working to focus on the other person <laughs> yeah if, if if you ask the right questions and get to the point where the other person you know where you have a, a understanding whether the products are or the business are are a want need or desire for that other yeah. person yeah they're not they're not like requesting credibility from you at that point yeah yeah, absolutely. When we talk on our team calls, you know, anytime we're starting feeling like we're not good enough or we have that kind of chatter happening in our head, that's exactly it, isn't it? We're focused on ourselves and not them. You know, we yeah, don't know what sure. their skills are. <clears throat> and people come into teams with more skills than, you know, upline or the support people and they can use the system and go as far as they want to go. Wouldn't that be an asset for many people? And that's I happened mean, for me. That's the kind of people I've looked for over the years. Uh, you know, I had some of my greatest success when I, when I sponsored a bunch of people that were way better than me. Mm. Personally, I'm like, oh man, this is great. Cause you, I, I had six, seven 
personally sponsor people who I felt were way better than me in a number of different areas. And, and you know, they all started growing and I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna go find another one. Cause yeah. you know, when you really sponsor a leader, what's interesting about sponsoring a leader, they'll, they, they'll call you when they need you. <laughs> for the most part, they're gonna, they're gonna run because mm -hmm. they're a leader for a reason, right? Yeah. And, and you know, you can be there to help them, but for the most part, the, the cool thing about, that's why I think having that posture and, and those seven attributes of that whole thing will allow you to go after leaders. And, and, and once you bring on some leaders and, and they take off, then your business is a completely new experience. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So um, I, all I'm seeing is gratitude in the chat, so no questions. So Ty, thank you so very much. Um, I know this will be replayed many a time. I think it's such good. Oh, this is another third party resource, isn't it? For people to use for their team members to say, have a listen to this and pick yourself up and you know, develop some new consistent daily habits that are supportive of your goals in Manatech. So God bless you. Thank you so very much. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, we have Karen Dennis, which is amazing. And um, just so you know, Karen's going to be teaching us on the compensation plan, but it doesn't, it's not going to actually replace the tour that's happening on the trainings. Uh, you'll need to attend those as well if you're close to one to get the more experiential and build your skills. But um, next week, we, Karen Dennis is going to be assisting us in making the comp plan easy for all of us. So Ty, have a great Friday evening. Thank you so, Thank much, you so much for much. being here. Take care, everyone. God bless. Really appreciate you. Thanks, everyone. No Have a great weekend.